It's time for the final reveal, right here on Interstellar Modeler. Well, I hope everyone had a Merry Christmas. We're now at the end of 2019, and we're also at the end of our buddy build. Everything is complete. Um, in this video, we're going to wrap things up by showing you how I painted Mr. Spock. Um, then I'm going to power this up so you can finally see it all lit up. And also, there will be a slideshow at the end showing uh, some of the beauty shots of the model and some of the details. Um, and hopefully you will enjoy that as well. So, um, this is my final build for the year. Um, obviously, I don't have time to get anything else done. Um, I'm also going to be uh, moving locally uh, here at the first of the year, so I won't uh, probably have anything else on the bench until uh, maybe spring at the earliest. Uh, by the time we get settled in our new house and I get everything set up, and it'll probably be close to end of February, early March time frame before I get in to do another build. Um, have lots of ideas for things uh, I want to do next year. I have lots of options. Uh, Augie and I have talked about trying to do maybe uh, two buddy builds in 2020. Uh, we'll see if we can squeeze that into our respective schedules. Um, I know everyone enjoys them. We enjoy making them. Uh, it's, a, it's just as much fun for us as it is for you to watch. Um, uh, two modelers building the same subject with uh, different ideas, different takes. So in this video, I want to go over the techniques I use to paint Mr. Spock. It's a technique I use on uh, probably all my figures. I want to talk about uh, the different stages from uh, base coating the face to painting the eyes to uh, adding shadows and highlights and um, then we'll go into how I how I paint my uh, um, figures by uh, mixing my paint colors on a wet palette. I um, I set it up from where I go from uh, the shadows to the highlights, and you'll see that in this video as well. With that in mind, I guess we'll get on to uh, how we got there and how I painted Mr. Spock. Okay, enjoy the video, and we'll see you soon. As with all my figures, I always start off painting the head first. I begin by applying a thin layer of paint, a base coat of flesh to the head, and next I do the eyes. So my eyes are always started off by painting the eyeball with a white flesh color. Then the uh, irises are done um, using appropriate colors. In Mr. Spock's case it was uh, browns and then um, followed up with a black for the pupils. The flesh tones on Mr. Spock are a little bit different from what I normally do. Um, in this case I have a 50-50 mitts of basic skin tone and beige red with some ivory added in to give his skin tone kind of a yellow hue um, I wanted it to be similar to the makeup that Leonard Nimoy actually used during the filming of the original series. So next we're going to paint um, our first shadows into the skin. Um, the color I'm going to use for that is just straight beige red. As we turn to the face itself, Keep in mind that our shadows and highlight areas are the keys that establish the shape of our face. The deepest and consequently the darkest parts of the face is the area between the eyes and under the brows and on either side of the nose. My first shadow of beige red is also applied to the deep recesses of the ears and along the hairline.
So one of the biggest challenges in painting faces is that there is so much to do in such a small area. For this reason, it's not generally a good idea to lay in your full range of colors all at once. So I find it more useful to only block in my base color first, then my shadows, and then my highlights. You want to blend these first, then, then go on to a lighter highlight and deeper shadows as required. Some shading is added to the hollows of the cheek. Somewhat less dark will be the underside of the chin, under the nose, and under the upper and lower lips. Up, we're going to block in our first highlights. The highlights fall across the forehead, down the bridge of the nose, on the cheekbones, and on the point of the jaw. The highlight color for Mr. Spock was created by adding ivory to the uh, base color, which was basic skin tone mixed with beige red. Remember after applying your first highlights is when you're going to also blend those in. When the blending is done, um, you want to be particularly careful that your highlight and your deep shadows never meet each other. When blending, um, it's especially important to restrict your blending just to the borders between colors. If you blend an area that is too wide, you'll lose definition and remember it's our shadows and highlights that are going to establish the shape of our face. So as you can see I also applied a base coat of burnt umber to uh, Mr. Spock's hair. Um, hair actually does have highlights and shadows just like our skin tones do. Um, dark colors are actually easier to shade when dealing with uh, darker colors, uh, one modest highlight shade should be enough because dark colors often pick up sufficient highlights from room lighting alone. So while Leonard Nimoy actually had dark brown hair, his uh, hair does appear black in the series. So Liquitet's glazing medium is mixed with Vallejo black and uh, that is applied over the burnt umber. Um, Remember that black uh, really doesn't have any shadows because there's no color darker than black. So the glaze medium in this case um, provides the sheen and the shininess that Leonard Nimoy actually had um, when he was in character as Mr. Spock. The final steps for completing the head are painting the details such as the eyebrows, the uh, eyeshadow makeup, um, some pink in the lips, and a bit of a five o'clock shadow that was evident um, in Leonard Nimoy's appearance as Mr. Spock. The five o'clock shadow, it's not too difficult. What I do is mix some field blue with the uh, base flesh color and I kind of stipple it in in the, uh, the beard area. Um, you feather it in lightly uh, across the highlights. Um, it will turn the highlight areas slightly gray without actually changing the base color to give you the illusion of a five o'clock shadow. So now that we are done with Spock's head, it's time to paint his uniform. So these are the shading and the highlighting colors that I've chosen to paint Spock's tunic. The colors are placed on my wet palette. From left to right, we'll have a gradual transition from our light highlights to our deep shadows. The paint recipe I'm using here is actually based on the one my friend Joe Hudson used when he did an article for Fine Scale Modeler in the May 2018 issue on painting Mr. Spock's uniform. So 
So the next step is to thin these paints uh, using an appropriate medium. In this case I'm using water, but you could also use glaze medium or matte medium or gloss medium, whatever you need uh, for, for uh, the subject that you're painting. Make sure you mix your paints thoroughly and you arrange them, your wet palette and the thinner in a convenient working pattern. You can use the method I've shown here or any method that works for you. That we've laid out the required colors on our wet palette. Uh, we begin blending them. Uh, we want to blend them so that we have a gradual transition between our light highlights, our highlights, our base color, our shadows, and then finally our deep shadows. This initial step in painting our uniform is to mix your basic color, your highlight color and your shadow color. Remember that the basic color is the actual color of the uniform. The highlight is a lighter version and the shadow is a darker version. So the mixing of the colors on my color palette should give you a rough idea of how much contrast there should be among the various shades from your light highlights to your deep shadows. The contrast should be strong. In fact, the most common error made by beginners is being timid with their color transitions. Keep your contrast strong even if you have to exaggerate it a little bit. With practice, you'll soon learn that blending, not the colors, is what gives figure shading its subtle effect. And here you can see on my Mr. Spock the various steps that I took from the first step of coloring your figure with the basic underpainting or base coating to introducing some shadows. first highlights, deeper shadows, high highlights, and blending it all together. Okay, after painting, Mr. Spock is given a gloss coat since decals adhere far better to a smooth finish than a flat one. We gather up our materials, including our decal setting solution. And then I just add some plain old water to our water reservoir. This is a decal tray made by a Trumpeter. The main objective of applying realistic decals is to de-emphasize and hide the carrier film, so trim it back as much as possible. We place the decal into our shallow dish of water to soak. After 10-20 seconds or so, we remove the decal, allow the excess water to drain off. Next, I add some of my decal setting solution to the area that I'm going to apply the decal. Okay, position the decal onto the model and gently slide the backing paper out from underneath it. Next, I carefully adjust the position of the decal by gently prodding it with a paintbrush. Next, I blot up all remaining water using a sponge applicator.
Now, you can apply more decal setting solution as needed. You can use Microset or Microsaw, which is a stronger version. Um, but they're, they're all solvents that actually soften the decal carrier film and allow it to conform better to the model. And finally, we add our photo etch communicator antenna. We paint up our phaser and we paint our not so accurate tricorder, but we give it some uh, detail painting to uh, make it look pretty, pretty close. The final step is to apply a clear flat coating to further hide the edges of the decal film and to protect the decals. All right, well, I am back, and Mark has done a phenomenal job with his bill, as well as being a great guest host for the last couple videos here. I'm hoping to uh, get him to be a guest host on a couple videos this coming year, uh, so we'll see if he can fit that into his schedule. But um, before we go on to the final reveal here, uh, I want to make a quick note about my build. So when I um, posted part two, uh, I had a couple comments posted um, uh, under that video uh, that made reference to the fact that I had forgotten about Spock's boots, and I actually really did. Um, I, I didn't even think about it, but Spock wears knee-high boots in the episode, and, uh, you know, I had just um, uh, settled on this idea that I would just leave him as is, that I was happy the way he turned out, but, you know, based on those comments, giving it some thought, I decided to pull him off the base, and then as you can see here, just uh, ground down uh, the pant legs. I was afraid that uh, this would leave... Um, uh, a problem with stability for the figure, but I was really careful about doing it and I applied epoxy skull putty to uh, shape the boots. At first I was really uh, kind of disappointed that I had proceeded with this because they weren't really looking right, but I was encouraged to push forward and I'm so glad I did. I worked on thinning out the boots and this is the way they came out. In the end, I'm really happy that uh, that uh, these guys made those comments and um, got me to uh, to adding that final detail. So um, the video is running a little bit long, but I think we'll just go ahead and push ahead with the final reveal. So let's begin uh, by me making a few comments about my build first. All right, well, here are the completed projects now, and first to look at them side by side. Now, as you know, I wanted my model to look like uh, the box art, which meant to use similar colors and paint schemes. I think overall it worked out pretty well. Obviously, the one alteration I wanted to make was to make Spock appear from the mirror universe, and this meant using something to alter his uniform. And uh, so this turned out to be a great learning experience for me because it was the first time I used epoxy sculpt to really mold or sculpt anything. And uh, it was a great material to use because it not only worked for his uniform, but also worked for the added features that we see on the base. Also, couldn't be happier with the backdrop. I was able to mimic what was seen on the box art uh, because essentially that's what I used. Uh, as you saw, I scanned an image of that art and using my Photoshop skills, I was able to remove the images of Spock and the snakes. And I think it turned out well. Um, I owe the final touch, of course, here to Mark Fraley who gave me that little Enterprise you'll see flying up there in the corner. Uh, this, of course, is the Enterprise from the K7 AMT model. As for lighting, this is something I always envisioned uh, with this model kit. Um, I used SMDs for my favorite source, modeltrainsoftware.com. Uh, I used three of the pulsating lights to create the effect for the hot lava, and two others for the flowers. I was originally going to make the pulsate uh, effect for the flowers as well, but it turned out to be a bit much. There is one regret I do have, however, and that is not making the flowers a different color. When not lit, the centers do vary in color from the pit, but this completely is lost once you turn on the lights. So in closing, I just want to say that I had a blast with this build. Both Mark and I really enjoyed putting this one together for you guys. No doubt this is something that brings a little nostalgia to you as you're looking at these kits completed. Uh, this classic kit has been around forever. And uh, this hopefully inspires you to uh, let your imagination run a little bit here so you can add more detailing to these kits. It really is a lot of fun to put this stuff together. All right, let's go ahead now and move on to Mark's slideshow. He's provided us some more pictures of his completed build. He did such a fantastic job. Let's go ahead and take a look. All right, let's power this bad boy up.
Okay, guys, that concludes my part of this year's Buddy Build. I hope you enjoyed it. What follows is a slideshow with beauty shots. Live long and prosper.
quite a slideshow. Mark did a great job putting that together, and didn't he do a fantastic job with the project? The phaser effect, absolutely amazing. He is a quite a talented model builder. So this brings the end now to this project, as well as to 2019 and the end of the decade, too. Wow, just amazing that 2020 now is just around the corner. I wanted to wish you guys all the best for this coming new year. Um, I just hope that there's a lot of good things in store for you, that you'll have a healthy, happy 2020. And that uh, also I appreciate your encouragement and all the support you've given me uh, through the years here and with the channel. I uh, certainly look forward to putting more stuff together for you guys in 2020. So thanks again for watching. If you have any questions, of course, feel free to comment here on the YouTube channel or email me at innersetamother at gmail.com. Thanks again for watching. Take care and have a great new year.